We're going to use this limb right here to do some palpation. It's going to be hard. It's much easier when it's on a standing animal. But we can see here, this is the medial side because here's the chestnut. And so here's the lateral side. And so if we follow the radius down here, we can see the styloid processes, the medial and lateral styloid process of the radius. So if you come back up here, you can see right here the muscle of the extensor carpi radialis, which is coming down here. Then we have our common digital extensor muscle and its tendon here more lateral. And then you can see the this ridge right here is our lateral digital extensor tendon. And it's coming down here to join the common, the laterals coming in here, the commons here as they come on down the metacarpus. And on this more medial aspect, if I tighten this up, I can feel the tendon here coming down to the metacarpal tuberosity. That's going to be the tendon of the extensor carpi radialis and we should be able to find right adjacent to it more lateral is going to be the tendon of the common digital extensor here so here's the tendon coming down right through here and then more on the lateral side we can actually see it right here the tendon of the lateral digital extensor which is going to come across here to join that common digital extensor tendon. Okay? So if we flex this joint, we can feel very nicely right in here between the two tendons the radiocarpal joint or antibrachial carpal joint. Notice the depression here. And you can also palpate that joint, especially when it's distended over on this lateral surface between the lateral styloid process and where the ulnaris lateralis inserts here on the accessory carpal bone. So that will be right up in here. Okay, That's when it's distended. And that is known as the palmarolateral pouch of the antibrachial carpal joint. Okay, we Come back here again and we can palpate. So here was the antibrachial carpal joint. This is going to be the middle carpal joint and the carpal metacarpal joint does not open with flexion, at least not much at all. And fortunately if you inject into the middle carpal it will communicate into that carpal metacarpal joint. Okay? So once again here's our lateral styloid process. Here is our accessory carpal bone here. We move on down the limb. We have our common digital extensor tendon here and we can feel the metacarpal 3 bone which is the cannon bone and we can feel right in here the splint bone. Okay, so this would be lateral splint bone. We follow it down and there's the button of the splint. And we can see here running right adjacent to it, that is going to be the interosseous muscle or what we commonly call in the horse the suspensory ligament. Okay, so you can see that suspensory ligament really nicely there. Okay, now distal to that button of the splint which is right there between the cannon bone and that suspensory ligament we can actually palpate the palmar pouch of the fetlock joint. Okay, that's proximal palmar pouch of the fetlock joint. 
and we can also do that but on the other side okay once again the splint bone's running right in here we can find the button of the splint right there there's the button of the splint and there's our proximal palmar pouch of the fetlock and here you can see that suspensory ligament really nice okay now this bundle here is the deep and the superficial digital flexors you can actually feel right about there the separation between the two okay now running in this groove here is going to be the vein artery and nerve the palmar vein artery and nerve so on this side is the medial palmar vein artery and nerve okay so it goes vein artery and nerve and it's a little hard to palpate in these specimens if this was a live animal you could actually feel the pulse in the artery okay we follow it down here we can find the proximal sesamoid bones here we have a nice ergot okay so here's the proximal sesamoid bones and then we can follow down in here the flexor tendons okay right here this structure right in here is the ungual cartilage okay you can actually feel it right in here and then running right in through here is going to be the digital vein artery nerve so it would be the medial palmar digital vein artery nerve in here okay you can see right here actually see it nicely running right here is going to be the extensor branch of the suspensory ligament okay it's coming over here and here we can see once again that common digital extensor tendon coming on down okay I don't know if we can actually see it but right about so our long pastern or first phalanx would be here and our second or middle phalanx would be here and our coffin joint would be somewhere about there so if we're going to do nerve blocks on this animal to do that we want to start most distally and work our way up and so we would palpate the ungual cartilage here and then proximal to the ungual cartilage and dorsal to those our flexor tendons to inject to block the medial palmar digital nerve okay this block will get the sole and the more portions of the digit and then if that animal didn't go sound we'd come up here to the sesamoid bones I can feel right there I can pop it over my thumb right there is the nerve so once again it's going to go vein artery nerve and if we block the nerve up at this level we would just infuse around that medial palmar digital nerve with the anesthesia we'd also block those dorsal branches so we get more of this digit if we blocked up here okay to block out the fetlock and all the way down we'd need to come up here find the buttons of our splints okay so on both sides we're doing each of these on both sides okay so we would do a block right here because coming around the buttons of the splints are going to be the palmar metacarpal nerves which are going to be the primary innervation to the fetlock so we'd want to get those but we'd also want to come back here at about the same level and get these palmar nerves because they're going to do a little bit of this palmar pouch of the fetlock 
but then of course it's getting the rest of the digit as well. Okay, so that would be a low four doing it down here. To do a high four, we'd want to come up in here. We'd want to remain, let's see if we can, ah, I can palpate right here the communicating branch between the, the medial palmar nerve and the lateral palmar nerve. Okay, so we always want to make sure we do these nerve blocks below that and the high four above that. Okay, so with the high four, we'd get these palmar nerves, but we'd also come up here and between the splint bone and the inner osseous, we put in anesthesia to get those metacarpals again. Okay. And this block as well will get everything distal to the block, including the flexor tendons and the suspensory ligament. To do just a lateral palmar nerve block, we would want to flex the joint and then distal to the accessory carpal bone, we put the needle in and infuse our anesthesia there. This block provides anesthesia to the origin of the inner osseous and the proximal portions of the third and fourth metacarpal bone. So once again, some of these distal landmarks, we would see the styloid processes, the lateral and medial styloid process of the radius, we would palpate extensor carpi radialis muscle here coming down to attach on the metacarpal tuberosity and then adjacent to it here would be the common digital extensor muscle its tendon here and then joining that tendon we could see the lateral digital extensor tendon here and then coming across here to join that on the palmar surface we can see here that splint bone coming down and the button of the splint here coming through here is the suspensory ligament the suspensory ligament has extensor branches that we can see crossing here. And then we have our deep and superficial digital flexor tendons. You can actually palpate the separation in here. And then running between or more dorsal to those tendons is going to be our, our palmar vein artery and nerve and it's going to be lateral and medial. The medial one is our primary blood supply to the digit. Come down here, we can see the ergot once again. We can see the proximal sesamoid bones are right here. Remember those nerves, you can palpate especially that palmar digital nerve as it crosses over right in there, crossing over those proximal sesamoid bones. And then they're going to course down in here between the pastern bones and the deep digital flexor tendon. And once again, it's vein, artery, and nerve. And then here we can palpate the ungual cartilage And then we have the cornet of the hoof and the hoof. <laughs> so those are the, the major things to palpate on the limb. So now we've skinned this limb and we can see here extensor carpi radialis muscle, its tendon coming across and attaching to the metacarpal tuberosity. We can see the common digital extensor tendon coming down here. 
and going all the way down the limb. Here's that very small lateral digital extensor coming down. You can see how it was very taut when we looked at it before and it coming down and joining that common digital extensor tendon. Accessory carpal bone is here. Ulnaris lateralis muscle is here. And then if we flip it over to the medial side, so we have our medial and lateral styloid processes. We can see here nicely as we flex this carpus, the antebrachial carpal joint, the middle carpal joint, the carpal metacarpal joint will be about here. Okay. And then on this side here we can see, it's nice if we tighten these up, we can see the superficial and the deep digital flexor tendons, so superficial and deep digital flexor tendons. You can see the fatty tissue here that the palmar nerve, artery, and vein are passing through. Okay, remember it's vein, artery, nerve in that order. And they're coming down here, passing over the proximal sesamoid bone, down into the digit. So at this point they become palmar digital vein artery and nerve. Here we can see right here, see this branch crossing right here? That's that communicating branch between the medial palmar and the lateral palmar nerves. And we can see the extensor branch nicely here of that suspensory ligament crossing over. So our common digital extensor tendon, the extensor branch of the suspensory ligament. Here you can see nicely the splint bone coming down, the button of the splint, and then right in here is where we palpated that proximal palmar pouch of the fetlock joint. Okay, and then down here let me skin this a little more. Down here we can nicely see that ungual cartilage. Okay. And here's down in here's the tendon of the deep digital flexor. So one little thing I forgot to show you is with that ergot, if you tense it up, there's a ligament of it that comes right down through here that you can palpate. And that's important because I'll show you on the other side. Now it's been cut on this side, but you can see it right here. This ligament here. The reason it's important clinically is because if you're doing a neurectomy and you come in here and you transect this ligament rather than the medial palmar digital or lateral palmar digital nerves, then the animal's not going to go sound. <laughs> okay, so that's an important structure just because you don't want to accidentally cut that rather than the nerve if you're doing a neurectomy. But you notice here on the medial side, the vessel is quite prominent. The medial palmar artery is the main supply. It's going to divide right about here into the medial and lateral palmar digital arteries, which you can palpate a pulse from either side, right here or even up here. And from the medial side, just up here in the metacarpal area. Okay? Hope that's helpful to you.